What's going on guys? The other day I saw The Athletic post an article asking what would an all buyout team look like. I figured why not put that team in NHL 23 and see how they play. Now I think their team used a bunch of retired players whereas my team is going to be only active NHLers. Aside from one legend, Mr. Buyout himself, Rick DiPietro, I figured we have to have him on this team. So I actually went and used his stats from when he was in his prime back in NHL 2008 coming off the 06-07 season. He actually had you know, pretty good numbers there like a 2.5 goals against decent save percentage. Um, in that game, he was 90 overall. So I actually transferred his stats into NHL 23. And clearly they reworked how like the overall is calculated because he was like an 83 in NHL 23. So I gave him plus five to everything. He's now a 90 with a perfect passing stat there, 99. So we're getting him a chance for redemption here. See if he can carry this team. And speaking of other team guys, deciding to end on the Baltic Sea buyouts. I actually really like that. I feel like when you buy out a player, essentially, you know, casting the sea, getting rid of them. You got the lighthouse there for them to find their way to this team and see if they can actually prove everybody wrong maybe make the playoffs these are definitely like my favorite teams where you got you know just a bunch of misfits like the vegas gold knights their first year and we'll see how they do so top players there rick di pietro value nichushkin a lot of people forgot he got bought out obviously he became a star on the card of avalanche matt duchene just bought out a very good player still can't believe the predators couldn't get anything for him at like 50 percent and in terms of this team's rating guys as you can see there they're 85 overall decided to put them in the central division honestly just to give them the best chance of making the playoffs and um, that does have no higher rate than both arizona and chicago so Maybe they can squeak in. Obviously, we're going to really need DPR to stand on his head here. Like I said, he's got a chance of redemption. We'll see if he takes it. All right, guys. Now, next time I'm going to show you what this team is looking like. Obviously, an all bio team is not the best, but we do have some stars on it. As I mentioned, Valiant and Chushkin, they're the best player on this team, aside from the uh, prime Di Pietro. 88 overall. Dallas definitely probably regrets this one. Had become a beast with Carter Avalanche. Very good 2 a player. You guys can see there, 93 D awareness. So we'll see if we can kind of lead this forward group. Playing with Matt Duchesne, probably the most recent, you know, star player to get bought out. Duchesne obviously put up 40 goals last season. Has sick hands, good skater. I think he'll provide some offense for us. Playing with Kelly Yamamoto, who was just bought out by the Red Wings. Pretty decent playmaker. I feel like he'll round out that top line quite well. They get a plus two. Bit of a secret weapon here. James Neal on the second line right wing has technically not retired yet. So I think he does count for this team. Only 76 overall, but still has a decent shot on him, which is the reason why he's playing second line there. And his sentiment's a total playmaker in Alex Wenberg. This is another one that was weird to me. I think the Blue Jackets bought him out when he was making like 4.9 million. And then the Kraken signed him long-term at like 4.75. So paid him pretty much the exact same. I don't know how they ran able to just, you know, make a trade happen there. But again, solid playmaker, decent shot, but he never uses it. Like, he is pass first, 100%. And then rounding out that second line, we got Zach Parise, obviously with a star back in his day, but he's 38 years old now. So we'll see how he does with those guys. Third line here, you got Rudolph Balsers, Josh Bailey, Corey Perry. Uh, Perry's obviously, you know, got some grit to his game. Even though Bailey's a winger, does have 72 faceoffs, so should you find in the middle. Fourth line here, we got Oscar Lindblom, Colin White, and then Zach Cassian. Cassian, obviously just all physicality, but honestly, that might help us out a bit. We'll see. Now, in terms of the defense, actually pretty solid. So top pairing there, Ryan Suter, Tony D'Angelo. D'Angelo here, the only player on the team to be bought out twice, I believe. So uh, Deep Pietro, you know, he's like what everyone thinks of for the bio. But D'Angelo's been bought out twice, I think within the last two years, which probably will never be done again. And honestly, like, he's very skilled. It's just obviously personality issues, whatever. Like, look at his stats. 92 passing and puck control. He's got a good shot. 92 offensive awareness. Decent skater, too. I should be low elite, not low top four. Probably has to do with his rating. It went down. But he's paired up with Ryan Suter again, just like Parise. You know, they got better together in Minnesota. Was a star back in his day. Still an okay defenseman. Uh, second pairing there, Ekman Larson just bought out. Another, you know, former star, Kevin Shankirk. He's actually pretty decent. I think the Rangers just paid him too much when they signed him in free agency. Uh, bomb pairing there, Mike Riley, Patrick Nemeth isn't terrible. Both 79s. Again, we got the 90 overall Rick DiPietro at the start of this team. Hopefully, you know, he can carry us. Backing him up, Martin Jones isn't that bad. 81 overall. Definitely played a bit better this year with the Kraken. In terms of the special teams, that first power play is actually pretty solid. Like, that's a legit NHL power play. Power play two, not quite the same, but... Um, hopefully they don't have to go out there that much. Um, some other guys that didn't quite make this team, we got Henrik Borgstrom there. Defensively, we got Jack Johnson, Michael Delzato. In goal, we got Brayton Holpe, Corey Schneider. So uh, just some of my guys, again, weren't quite good enough for this team. Next year, guys, I'll show you how we're doing the preseason. As you can see there, just Shane, over a point per game. He's got eight and seven, currently five and two. And next year, I'll show you our ratings as well as what the jerseys look like for this team. So decided to try something new with for the away jersey because it's got the lighthouse with kind of like a sailor pirate theme there with the stripes. Uh, the home jersey there is just classic, the alternate is like a gray and then in terms of the ratings we've got 83 offense 86 defense and 90 goaltending so is this team gonna make the playoffs probably not but let's see what happens also two guys i should mention yan kukin in here should be on the hl team apparently didn't have a contract but he just popped up it reminds me if you wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this video it really helps me out 20 minutes later
I honestly don't understand this game sometimes, guys. The All Bio team finished first place in the Central Division, 97 points there, with a 43, 28, and 11 record. Are you kidding me? Like, I was just hoping somehow, some way, this team would make the playoffs, but they win the division. I assume Deep Pietro popped off. Uh, Duchesne there did. 79 points, 82 games. Almost a point per game for him is very impressive, especially, like, he had Nachushkin on one wing, Yamamoto on the other. Like, it's pretty solid, but not amazing or anything. Uh, Nachushkin, speaking of, 71 points. Yamamoto there is 50 plus. Same with D'Angelo, so that helps as well. Ekman Larson there, a bit of return to form, almost at 50 points. I think he was playing both uh, second power plays. Bailey was close to 52, so some of these guys bouncing back. Wenberg, 45, will take. James Neal there, 76 overall, still put up 24 goals for us. I figured that shot was too good not to. He had 40 points. Same with Corey Perry. Uh, Parise was pretty close, so I guess, you know, everyone here really chipping in. Aside from uh, the lowest scoring forward there, Zach Cassie had 13 points. You kind of expect that. Di Pietro, oh my goodness. Yeah, he's a big reason why he played so well. 0.92 save percentage, 2.55 goals against. This dude was out to prove the haters wrong. You gotta love that. Um, we'll see if he actually wins the Vesna, because that'd be kind of awesome, honestly. We bring Di Pietro back, and he's the best goal in the NHL. Uh, points there, Marchand and Dreisel tied 102. Ovi at 100. Um, let's see, McDavid 96 there. We had no one at the top. Goals, Matthews 51. Actually tied Nathan McKinnon. Defensive scoring there, Cal McCard 98. The dude just sims so, so well. And now in terms of the goalie stats, Marchand had the most wins, 37. Uh, DPX, I actually don't even see on the first page, unfortunately. But um, save percentage for a starter. Demko there, 9-2. Tied with Hart and DiPietro. DiPietro only had 31 wins. So probably not winning the Vesna, but still. Like, he had some of the best numbers. He had the lowest goals against, 2 5, five. So he actually might be getting to William Jennings, which would be something for sure. Uh, Kuzmenko, 90 points. But uh, Beniers probably wins the Calder there because Kuzmenko cannot. Now in terms of the entire league here, guys, Tampa Bay won the President's Trophy. And we actually finished 8th in the NHL. Like, that is unbelievable. And last place were the Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, so this is clearly a bit of a crazy sim, but regardless, uh, we got in, we won our division. Let's see if we can make some noise now in the playoffs. So we got the Winnipeg Jets in the first round. Obviously, too, we're going to have home ice advantage, at least uh, the first two rounds, because we won that division. So uh, we'll just sim a bunch of games here, see what happens. Uh, we won both two games at home in the Baltic Sea, wherever our arena is. Maybe it's on some floating platform. And we actually sweep the Winnipeg Jets. That is crazy. Deep Jets had two shutouts there in the first round alone. So yeah, he's a big reason why we're having the success. Next up here, we got the Minnesota Wild. So let's see what happens here. Uh, we won the first, they won the next. It's actually 2-2 two -two here after four. So can we get by them? Win, loss, and we win game seven in OT. Conference final now against the Canucks, who apparently won the Pacific Division because they got the home ice advantage. For some reason, the game loves the Canucks in the sim. I really don't get it. They really should be a wildcard team on paper, but uh, right now we're playing them. We're currently down three to one. So Canucks might be beating us here. And they do, okay. So we lost the Canucks in six, but honestly, I am more than fine with that. I would've just been impressed with this team somehow in the playoffs to actually win the division, make the Cummins final. That is crazy. I'll take a look here and see how everyone did in the playoffs. So Nachushkin there, just under point per game. Yamamoto at 12, Duchesne 11. So first line's doing pretty well. Corey Perry, 10. D'Angelo and Sutter each had nine. Di Pietro, 9 2 6 2 3 3 he was doing all he could, unfortunately, just wasn't enough. And now the playoffs are over, guys. The Washington Capitals actually won the Stanley Cup. Do a quick look here at the playoff tree, see who they went through. Uh, so they beat the Flyers in six in the first round. How are the Flyers making the playoffs? Uh, the Rangers in five, Detroit in five. Like I mentioned before, the Simmons love in Detroit after adding to Brinkett. And then again, they beat the Canucks there in six. So definitely some surprises there. Washington win the Stanley Cup. I mean, if Ovi goes God mode, I could see it maybe happening. Individual awards here, so Dreisselart, Ross. Ovi got the heart. Talk about him going God mode. John Carlson, James Norris, Mitch Marner, Lady Bing. Beniers got the Calder. Patch Reddy, Con Smythe. Again, I think that was a huge acquisition for them. Uh, Markstrom got the Vesna. Along with William Jennings. Okay, so we actually didn't get that. Uh, Zub, Bill Masterton. Flyers coach Jack Adams makes sense. Kopitar, Selkie, Ovechkin, Ted Lindsay, and then Matthews there, Marisha Shard. So even though we didn't take up any hardware, the fact that this team not only made the plus, won their division is so, so impressive. Like, honestly, I uh, wasn't expecting that at all. And lastly here, guys, check out the stat page. Pretty much every player went up in rating. Duchesne's 87, so that's plus one. Nachushkin plus one. Yeah, you know, Moto there is a plus two. Uh, D'Angelo plus one. Ekman Larson plus two. Bailey plus three. Wenberg stayed the same, actually. Perry plus one. Parise plus one. I think Shackler say the same, same with Suter, which I think just shows you everyone on this team really stepped up. I wanted to prove all the haters wrong, which you gotta respect. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one.